Lauren Bicall, born Betty Joan Persky, September 16, 1924, August 12, 2014, was an American actress known for her distinctive voice and sultry looks. She was named the 20th greatest female star of classic Hollywood cinema by the American Film Institute, and received an Academy Honorary Award from the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences in 2009, in recognition of her central place in the golden age of motion pictures. Bicall began her career as a model, before making her debut as a leading lady with Humphrey Bogart in the film To Have and Have Not in 1944. She continued in the film noir genre with appearances with Bogart in The Big Sleep, 1946, Dark Passage, 1947, and Key Largo, 1948, and starred in the romantic comedies How to Marry a Millionaire, 1953, with Marilyn Monroe and Designing Woman, 1957, with Gregory Peck. She co-starred with John Wayne in his final film, The Shootist, 1976. Bacall also worked on Broadway and musicals, earning Tony Awards for Applause, 1970, and Woman of the Year, 1981. Her performance in The Mirror Has Two Faces, 1996, earned her a Golden Globe Award and an Academy Award nomination. A month before her 90th birthday, Bicall died in New York City after a stroke. Early life, Bicall was born Betty Joan Persky on September 16, 1924, in the Bronx, New York, the only child of Natalie, née Weinstein Backel, 1901-1977, a secretary who later legally changed her surname to Bicall, and William Persky, who worked in sales. Both her parents were Jewish. According to Bicall, her mother immigrated from the Kingdom of Romania through Ellis Island, and her father was born in New Jersey, to parents who were born in an area of Poland which was referred to as Vistula Land, in the Russian Empire. Soon after her birth, Bicall's family moved to Brooklyn's Ocean Parkway. She was educated with the financial support of her wealthy uncles at a private boarding school founded by philanthropist Eugene Heidler Lehman, named the Highland Manor Boarding School for Girls, in Terrytown, New York, and at Julie Julia Richmond High School in Manhattan. Through her father, she was a relative of Shimon Peres, born Zyman Persky, the ninth president of Israel. Peres has stated, in 1952 or 1953 I came to New York. Lauren Bicall called me, said that she wanted to meet, and we did. We sat and talked about where our families came from, and discovered that we were from the same family, but I'm not exactly sure what our relation is. It was she who later said that she was my cousin. I didn't say that. Her parents divorced when she was five. She later took the Romanian in form of her mother's last name, Bicall. She no longer saw her father and formed a very close bond with her mother, who remarried to Lee Goldberg and came to live in California after Bicall became a movie star. Early career and modeling. In 1941 Bicall took lessons at the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, where she was classmates with Kirk Douglas, while working as a theater usher at the St. James Theater and Fashion Model. She made her acting debut on Broadway in 1942, at age 17, as a walk-on in Johnny 2x4. By then, she lived with her mother on Bank Street, Greenwich Village, and in 1942 she was crowned Miss Greenwich Village. As a teenage fashion model she appeared on the cover of Harper's Bazaar. The cover has since been described as iconic, as well as in magazines such as Vogue. She was noted for her cat-like grace, tawny blonde hair and blue-green eyes. Though Deanna Vreeland is often credited with discovering Bicall for Harper's Bazaar, it was in fact Nicholas de Gunsberg who introduced the 18-year-old de Vreeland. He had first met Bicall at Tony's, an East 50s club where habitues gathered to listen to hyper-sophisticated Educated cabaret artist Mabel Mercer, de Gunsberg suggested that the tawny-haired drama student stop by his bizarre office the next day. He then turned over his find to Vreeland, who arranged for Louise Dahl Wolf to shoot Bicall in Kodachrome for the March 1943 cover. The Harper's Bazaar cover caught the attention of Hollywood producer and director Howard Hawks' wife Slim, who urged Hawks to have Bicall take a screen test for To Have and Have Not. Hawks asked his secretary to find out more about her, but the secretary misunderstood and sent Bicall a ticket to come to Hollywood for for the audition, Hollywood. After meeting Bicall in Hollywood, Hawks immediately signed her to a seven-year contract with a weekly salary of $100, and personally began to manage her career. He changed her first name to Lauren, and she chose Bicall, a variant of her mother's maiden name, as her screen surname. Slim Hawks also took Bicall under her wing, dressing Bicall stylishly and guiding her in matters of elegance, manners and taste. At Hawks' suggestion, Bicall was also trained to make her voice lower and deeper, as she naturally had a high-pitched, nasal voice. Hawks had her, under the tutelage of a voice coach, lower the pitch of her voice. As part of her training, she was required
required to shout verses of Shakespeare for hours every day. At five feet, eight and a half inches, she was taller than most, and stood out from other young women actors in the movie business in the 1940s and 1950s, and that, along with her voice would become trademarks. Her voice was characterized as a smoky, sexual growl, and a throaty purr, among other descriptions. During her screen tests for To Have and Have Not, 1944, Bacall was so nervous that, to minimize her quivering, she pressed her chin against her chest and, to face the camera, tilted her eyes upward. This effect, which came to be known as the look, along with her now sultry voice, became another Bacall trademark. Bacall's character in the film used Slim Hawk's nickname Slim, and Bogart used Howard Hawk's nickname Steve. On the set, the chemistry between the two was immediate according to Bacall, and she and Bogart, who was married at the time to Mayo Method, began a relationship several weeks into shooting and began seeing each other. Bacall's role in the script was originally much smaller, but during filming her part was revised multiple times to extend it into the lead part that it became in the released film. Once released, to have and have not catapulted Bacall into instant stardom, and her performance became the cornerstone of her star image, the impact of which extended into popular culture at large, even influencing fashion, as well as filmmakers and other actors. Warner Brothers launched an extensive marketing campaign to promote the picture and to establish Bacall as a movie star. As part of the public relations push, Bacall made a visit to the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., on February 10, 1945. It was there that Bacall's press agent, chief of publicity at Warner Warner Brothers, Charlie Enfield, asked the 20-year-old Bacall to sit on the piano while U.S. Vice President Harry S. Truman played. After To Have and Have Not, Bacall was seen opposite Charles Boyer in Confidential Agent, 1945, which was poorly received by critics. By her own estimation, it could have caused considerable damage to her career, had her performance as the mysterious, acid-tongued Vivian Rutledge in Hawks's film Noir The Big Sleep, 1946, co-starring Bogart, not provided a quick career resurgence. The Big Sleep laid the foundation for her status as an icon of film noir. She would be strongly associated with the genre for the rest of her career, and would often be cast as variations of the independent and sultry femme fatale character of Vivian she played in the movie. As described by film scholar Joe McElhaney, Vivian displays an almost total command of movement and gesture. She never crawls. Bacall was cast with Bogart in two more films. In Dark Passage, 1947, in other film noir, she played an enigmatic San Francisco artist. Miss Bacall, generated it's quite a lot of pressure as a sharp-eyed, knows what she wants girl, wrote Bosley Crowther of the New York Times of her performance. And, in 1948, she was in John Huston's melodramatic suspense film Key Largo with Bogart and Edward G. Robinson. In the film, according to film critic Jessica Kiang, Bacall brings an edge of ambivalence and independence to the role that makes her character much more interesting than was written. 1950s. Bacall turned down scripts she did not find interesting, and thereby earned a reputation for being difficult. Despite this, she further solidified her star status in the 1950s by appearing as the leading lady in a string of films that won favorable reviews. Bacall was cast opposite Gary Cooper in Bright Leaf, 1950. In the same year, she played a two-faced femme fatale in Young Man with a Horn, 1950, a jazz musical co-starring Kirk Douglas, Doris Day, and Hoagy Carmichael. During 1951-1952, Bacall co-starred with Bogart in the syndicated action-adventure radio series Bold Venture. In 1953 she starred in the Cinemascope comedy How to Marry a Millionaire, a runaway hit among critics and at the box office. Directed by Jean Negulesco and co-starring Marilyn Monroe and Betty Grable, Bacall got positive notices for her turn as the witty gold digger, Shots Page. First honors in spreading mirth go to Miss Bacall, wrote Alton Cook in the New York World Telegram and Sun. The most intelligent and predatory of the trio, she takes complete control of every scene with her acid delivery of viciously witty lines. As she recounts in her autobiography, Bacall declined the coveted invitation from Grauman's Chinese Theater to press her hand and footprints in the theater's cemented forecourt at the Los Angeles premiere of the film, writing, The day I was told about it, I said to Bogey that it seemed to me anyone with a picture opening could be represented there, standards had been so lowered. Bogey, loving a chance to puncture Hollywood's ego, said, Why don't you refuse? Joe Hyams, sensing a story, agreed. I, welcoming the idea of a new cause, however minor and short-lived, decided I would refuse. Joe said he'd print my statement in the Tribune, and I wrote, before I came to Hollywood, 
Grauman's Chinese was something very special to me, it meant not only achievement, it was the hall of fame of the motion picture industry and the people in it were unforgettables and irreplaceables, I don't think of myself as either, I feel that my career is undergoing a change and I want to feel I've earned my place with the best my business has produced, that statement made newspapers across the country, I wasn't asked again, and so 25 years later, a tourist or aspiring actor going to Grauman's Chinese to see the legendary star's footprints will not see mine, or miss them, Lauren because by myself and then some, PG, 240, at the time, Bacall was still under contract to 20th Century Fox, following How to Marry a Millionaire, she appeared in yet another cinemascope comedy directed by Jean Negulesco, Woman's World, 1954, which failed to match its predecessor's success at the box office, in 1955 a television version of Bogart's breakthrough film, The Petrified Forest, was performed as a live installment of Produces Showcase, a weekly dramatic anthology, featuring Bogart as Duke Mandy, Henry Fonda as Alan, and and Bacall as Gabrielle, the part originally played in the 1936 movie by Betty Davis. Bogart had originally played the part on Broadway with the subsequent movie's star Leslie Howard, who had secured a film career for Bogart by insisting that Warner Brothers cast him in the movie instead of Edward G. Robinson. Bogart and Bacall named their daughter Leslie Howard Bogart in gratitude. In the late 1990s, Bacall donated the only known kinescope of the 1955 performance to the Museum of Television and Radio, now the Paley Center for Media, where it remains archived for viewing in New York City and Los Angeles. In 1955 Bacall starred in two feature films, The Cobweb and Blood Alley. Directed by Vincent Minnelli, The Cobweb takes place at a mental institution in which Bacall's character works as a therapist. It was her second collaboration with Charles Boyer and also starred Richard Widmark and Lillian Gish. In the only two really sympathetic roles, Mr. Widmark is excellent and Miss Bacall shrewdly underplays, wrote the New York Times. Many film scholars consider Written on the Wind, directed by Douglas Sirk in 1956, to be a landmark work in the melodrama genre. Appearing with Rock Hudson, Dorothy Malone and Robert Stack, Bacall played a career woman whose life is unexpectedly turned around by a family of oil magnates. Bacall wrote in her autobiography that she did not think much of the role, but reviews were favorable. Wrote Variety, Bacall registers strongly as a sensible girl swept into the madness of the oil family. While struggling at home with Bogart's battle with esophageal cancer, Bacall starred with Gregory Peck in Designing Woman to Solid Reviews. The musical comedy was her second second feature with director Vincent Minnelli and was released in New York on May 16, 1957, four months after Bogart's death on January 14. Bacall appeared in two more films in the 1950s, the Jean Negulesco-directed melodrama The Gift of Love, 1958, which co-starred Robert Stack, and the adventure film Northwest Frontier, 1959, which was a box office hit, 1960s and 1970s. Bacall's movie career waned in the 1960s, and she was seen in only a handful of films. She started on Broadway in Goodbye, Charlie in 1959, and went on to have a successful on-stage career in Cactus Flower, 1965, Applause, 1970, and Woman of the Year, 1981. She won Tony Awards for her performances in the latter two. Applause was a musical version of the film All About Eve, in which Betty Davis had starred as stage diva Margot Channing. According to Bacall's autobiography, she and a girlfriend won an opportunity in 1940 to meet her idol Betty Davis at Davis's hotel. Years later, Davis visited Bacall backstage to congratulate her on her performance in Applause. Davis told Bacall, you're the only one who could have played the part. The few films Bacall made during this period were all-star vehicles such as Sex and the Single Girl, 1964, with Henry Fonda, Tony Curtis, and Natalie Wood, Harper, 1966, with Paul Newman, Shelley Winters, Julie Harris, Robert Wagner, and Janet Lee, and Murder on the Orient Express, 1974, with Ingrid Bergman, Albert Finney, Vanessa Redgrave, Martin Balsam, and Sean Connery. In 1964 she appeared in two episodes of Craig Stevens's Mr. Broadway, first in Take a Walk Through a Cemetery, with then-husband, Jason Roberts, Jr., and later as Barbara Lake in the episode Something to Sing About, co-starring future co-star Balsam. For her work in the Chicago Theater, Bacall won the Sarah Siddons Award in 1972, and again in 1984. In 1976 she co-starred with John Wayne in his last picture, The Shootist. The two became friends, despite significant political differences between them. They had pre previously worked together in Blood Alley, 1955. Later career, during the 1980s, Bacall appeared in the poorly received star vehicle The Fan, 1981, as well as some star-studded features such as Robert Altman,
Women's Health, 1980, and Michael Winner's Appointment with Death, 1988. In 1990, she had a small role in Misery, which starred Kathy Bates and James Caan. In 1990 she voiced the main antagonist Frizelda, along with Brian Adams, in the Canadian animated television special The Real Story of the Three Little Kittens which was created for The Real Story of Favorite Songs Anthology Series. The special was produced by Sinar, previously and formerly known as Cookie Jar Group and now known as DHX Media, in Canada and France Animation in France in association with Crayon Animation and Western Publishing and first aired on CTV Television Network in Canada and later on HBO in the United States. It was also released on video by Golden Book Video and later re-released by Sony Wonder. In 1997 Bacall was nominated for a Best Supporting Actress Academy Award for her role in The Mirror Has Two Faces, 1996, her first nomination after a career span of more than 50 years. Bacall had already won a Golden Globe and was widely expected to win the Oscar, but lost in an upset to Juliette Binos for The English Patient. Bacall received the Kennedy Center Honors in 1997, and in 1999, she was voted one of the 25 most significant female movie stars in history by the American Film Institute. Her movie career saw something of a renaissance, and she attracted respectful notices for her performances in high-profile projects such as Dogville, 2003, Birth, 2004, both with Nicole Kidman, and in Howell's Moving Castle, 2004, as The Witch of the Waste. She was a leading actor in Paul Schrader's The Walker, 2007. In 1999 Bacall starred in a revival of Noelle Coward's Waiting in the Wings. Her commercial ventures in the 2000s included being a spokesperson for the Tuesday morning discount chain. Commercials showed her in a limousine waiting for the store to open at the beginning of one of their sales events, and producing a jewelry line with the Weinman Brothers Company. She previously was a celebrity spokesperson for High Point, Coffee, and Fancy Feast Cat Food. In March 2006, Bacall was seen at the 78th Annual Academy Awards introducing a film montage dedicated to film noir. She made a cameo appearance as herself on The Sopranos, in the April 2006 episode, Luxury Lounge, during which she was mugged by Chris Moltisanti, played by Michael Imperioli. In September 2006, Bacall was awarded the first Catherine Hepburn Medal, which recognizes women whose lives, work and contributions embody the intelligence, drive and independence of the four-time Oscar-winning actress, by Bryn Mawr College's Catherine Houghton Hepburn Center. She gave an address at the Memorial Service of Arthur M. Schlesinger, Jr. at the Reform Club in London in June 2007. She finished her role in The Forger in 2009. Bacall was selected by the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences to receive an honorary Academy Award. The award was presented at the inaugural Governor's Awards on November 14, 2009. In July 2013, Bacall expressed interest in taking the starring role in the film Trouble Is My Business. In November, she joined the English dub voice cast for Studio Canal's animated film Ernest and Celestini. Her final role was in 2014, a guest vocal appearance in the 12th season Family Guy episode Mom's The Word, Personal Life, Relationships and Family. On May 21, 1945, Bacall married actor Humphrey Bogart. Their wedding and honeymoon took place at Malabar Farm, Lucas, Ohio, the country home of Pulitzer Prize winning author Louis Bromfield, a close friend of Bogart. The wedding was held in the big house. Bacall was 20 and Bogart was 45, thus, she was nicknamed Baby. They remained married until Bogart's death from esophageal cancer in 1957. Pressed by interviewer Michael Parkinson to talk about her marriage to Bogart, and asked about her notable reluctance to do so, she replied that being a widow is not a profession. During the filming of The African Queen, 1951, Bacall and Bogart became friends of Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy. She began to mix in non-acting circles, becoming friends with the historian Arthur Schlesinger, Jr. and the journalist Alistair Cook. In 1952, she gave campaign speeches for Democratic presidential contender Adlai Stevenson, along with other Hollywood. Hollywood figures, Bacall was a staunch opponent of McCarthyism. Shortly after Bogart's death in 1957, Bacall had a relationship with singer and actor Frank Sinatra. During an interview with Turner Classic Movies as Robert Osborne, Bacall stated that she had ended the romance but in her autobiography, she wrote that Sinatra abruptly ended the relationship after becoming angry that the story of his proposal to Bacall had reached the press. When Bacall was out with her friend Irving Paul Lazar, they ran into the gossip columnist Luella Parsons, to whom Lazar revealed the details of the proposal. Bacall later met actor Jason Roberts. Their marriage was originally scheduled to take place in Vienna, Austria on June 16, 1961. However, the plans were shelved after Austrian authorities refused to grant the pair a marriage license. They were also refused a marriage in Las Vegas, Nevada. On July 4, 1961, the couple drove all the way to Ensenada, Mexico, where they wed. The couple divorced in 1969. According to Bacall's autobiography,
autobiography, she divorced Roberts mainly because of his alcoholism. Bacall had a son and daughter with Bogart, and a son with Roberts. Her children with Bogart are her son Stephen Humphrey Bogart, born January 6, 1949, a news producer, documentary filmmaker and author named after Bogart's character in, To Have and Have Not, and her daughter Leslie Howard Bogart, born August 23, 1952, named after actor Leslie Howard, who is a nurse and yoga instructor, married to Eric Schiffman. In his 1995 memoir, Stephen wrote, My mother was a lapsed Jew, and my father was a lapsed Episcopalian, and that he and his sister were raised Episcopalian, because my mother felt that would make life easier for Leslie and me during those post-World War II years. Sam Roberts, born December 16, 1961, her son with Roberts, is an actor. She wrote two autobiographies, Lauren Bacall by Myself, 1978, and Now, 1994. In 2006, the first volume of Lauren Bacall by Myself was reprinted as By Myself and then some with an extra chapter, Political Views. Bacall was a staunch liberal Democrat, and proclaimed her political views on numerous occasions. Bacall and Bogart were among about 80 Hollywood personalities to send a telegram protesting the House Un-American Activities Committee's investigations of Americans suspected of communism. The telegram said that investigating individuals' political beliefs violated the basic principles of American democracy. In October 1947, Bacall and Bogart traveled to Washington, D.C., along with a number of other Hollywood stars, in a group that called itself the Committee for the First Amendment, CFA, which also included Danny Kaye, John Garfield, Gene Kelly, John Huston, Ira Gershwin and Jane Wyatt. She appeared alongside Humphrey Bogart in a photograph printed at the end of an article he wrote, titled I'm No Communist, in the May 1948 edition of Photoplay magazine, written to counteract negative publicity resulting from his appearance before the House Committee. Bogart and Bacall distanced themselves from the Hollywood Ten and said, we're about as much in favor of communism as J. Edgar Hoover. Bacall campaigned for Democratic candidate Adlai Stevenson in the 1952 presidential election, accompanying him on motorcades along with Bogart, and flying east to help in the final laps of Stevenson's campaign in New York and Chicago. She also campaigned for Robert Kennedy in his 1964 run for the U.S. Senate. In a 2005 interview with Larry King, Bacall described herself as anti-Republican, a liberal, the L word. She added that being a liberal is the best thing on earth you can be. You are welcoming to everyone when you are liberal. You do not have a small mind. Death. Lauren Bacall died on August 12, 2014, at her longtime apartment in the Dakota, the Upper West Side building overlooking Central Park in Manhattan. She was 89, five weeks short of her 90th birthday. According to her grandson Jamie Bogart, the actress died after suffering a massive stroke. She was confirmed dead at New York Presbyterian Hospital. She is interred at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Glendale, California. Bacall had an estimated 26.6 million dollars estate, and in her will she left $10,000 to her youngest son, Sam Roberts to take care of her dog, Sophie. Bacall also left money to two of her employees, Ilsa Hernandez and Maria Santos. Hernandez received $15,000 while Santos received $20,000. Bacall left $250,000 each to her youngest grandsons, the sons of Sam Roberts for college, and the bulk of her estate was divided among her three children, Leslie Bogart, Stephen Humphrey Bogart, and Sam Roberts. She owned artworks by a number of artists, including John James Audubon, Max Ernst, David Hockney, Henry Moore and Jim Dine. The Swedish Film Institute in Gardet, Ostermalm in Stockholm honored her with a special evening event three months after her death on November 12, 2014. Life magazine published a special edition about her life, and Turner Classic Movies, TCM, produced two televised tributes to her, one narrated by Kelsey Grammer and another narrated by Gregory Peck, a friend of hers since she was 17. In a 1996 interview Bacall, reflecting on her life, told the interviewer that she had been lucky, I had one great marriage, I have three great children and four grandchildren, I am still alive, I still can function, I still can work, adding, you just learn to cope with whatever you have to cope with, I spent my childhood in New York, riding on subways and buses, and you know what you learn if you're a New Yorker, the world doesn't owe you a damn thing. Filmography. Radio appearances. Books. Lauren Bacall by Myself, 1978. Now, 1994. By Myself and Then Some, 2005. Awards and nominations. 1967 Hasty Pudding Woman of the 
Year, 1970 Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical, Applause, 1972 Sarah Siddons Award Actress of the Year, 1980 National Book Award in the One Year Category, Autobiography, 1981 Tony Award for Best Actress in a Musical, Woman of the Year, 1984 Sarah Siddons Award Actress of the Year, 1990 George Eastman Award, 1992 Dinostia Award, Honorary, 1993 Golden Globe Cecil B. DeMille Award, 1994 National Board of Review Award for Best Cast, Preda Porter, Ready to Wear, 1996 Honorary Caesar, 1997 Berlin International Film Festival, Berlin Ale Camera, 1997 Screen Actors Guild Award for Outstanding Performance by a Female Actor in a Supporting Role, The Mirror Has Two Faces, 1997 Golden Globe Award for Best Supporting Actress, Motion Picture, The Mirror Has Two Faces, 1997 San Diego Film Critics Society Award for Best Supporting Actress, The Mirror Has Two Faces, 1997 Kennedy Center Hanna's, 2000 Stockholm International Film Festival Lifetime Achievement Award 2007 Norwegian International Film Festival Lifetime Achievement Award 2009 Academy Honorary Award in recognition of her central place in the golden age of motion pictures Nominations 1977 BAFTA Award for Best Actress in a Leading Role The Shootist 1980 Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actress in a Drama Series The Rockford Files 1997 BAFTA Award for Best Actress in a Supporting Role The Mirror has two faces 1997 academy award for best actress in a supporting role the mirror has two faces in 1991 bacall was honored with a star on the hollywood walk of fame at 1724 vine street in 1997 a golden palm star on the palm springs california walk of stars was dedicated to her in 1998 bacall was inducted into the american theater hall of fame in popular culture film the 1980 television film bogey directed by vincent sherman and based on a book by joe hyam tells the story of Bogart meeting Bacall while making to have and have not in 1943, and beginning the affair with her that led to the dissolution of Bogart's marriage to Mayo Method. Bacall is portrayed by Catherine Harold in the film, Kevin O'Connor plays Bogart, and Method is played by Anne Wedgworth. Animation Bacall and Bogart are parodied in the Warner Brothers' Mary Melody's short Bacall to Arms, 1946. Music Bacall and Bogart are referenced in Bertie Higgins' song Key Largo, 1981. Bacall is referenced in The Clash's song Car Jamming, 1982. Bacall and Bogart are referenced in Suzanne Vega's song Freeze Tag, 1985. She is referenced in Vogue the 1990 Madonna song. Bacall was the last to die of the mentioned celebrities. She is the subject of the song, Just Like Lauren Bacall, 2008, written by Kevin Roth. Books Bacall and Her Manhattan Apartment are featured in the Dakota Scrapbook, 2014, a photojournalism volume on the history of the Dakota apartment building in New York City, and its famous residence over the years. Marshall Island's namesake, the town of Laura, on the island of Majuro in the Marshall Islands, is one of several island towns codenamed after famous pinups by World War II U.S. forces.